Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reacting to From Spy to President, The Rise of Vladimir Putin, the man himself. I don't think Russia is a kingdom, but Putin has been in power for as long as I can remember. And I didn't even know he was a spy. I just learned that from the title. But yeah, please don't forget to leave a, do not forget to leave a like if you enjoy the content. Comment on what you see next and subscribe for more content. Let's learn together. Vladimir Putin has been ruling Russia since 1999. In that time, he shaped the country into an authoritarian and militaristic society. He successfully invaded two of Russia's neighbors and strengthened ties with Syria and Iran. He's intent on pushing back against the Western world order, and it appears to be working. Putin, 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 Vladimir Putin, 17 years of the most powerful man in the world. To understand how one man could have such how a true is that statement that Putin is the most powerful man in the world? I thought that was supposed to be the, 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 the American president. Right now we have a genocide Joe on this country, you need to go back to the chaos and corruption that gripped Russia after the fall of the Soviet Union. When the Berlin Wall fell, a 40-year-old Putin was working as an undercover spy in East Germany for the Soviet security agency, the KGB. The Soviet Union dissolved into 15 new countries, including the new Russian Federation. In Putin's eyes, Russia had just lost 2 million square miles of territory. He later called this a major geopolitical disaster of the century lamenting that tens of millions of his co-patriots found himself outside Russian territory. The new government had to sell off nearly 45,000 public businesses, like energy, mining, and communication companies that had been run by the communist regime. And it was chaos. The Russian economy was in a free fall, and all of these companies ended up in the hands of a few extremely wealthy men, known today as Russia's mm. oligarchs. At the same time, the new Russian state was having a hard time establishing itself. Russia's first president, Boris Yeltsin, was wildly unpopular for cooperating with the West. And to make matters worse, he was an alcoholic, and many Russians thought he was an embarrassment. In How order to did stay he win the elections being an alcoholic, or did he start after he won the elections? By the way, how did they go from the, the, the USSR to Russia? Like, because the Communist Party, I need to learn more about Russia. I, I gotta go back to watch those videos power, he leaned on the support of these oligarchs, surrendering an immense amount of political power to them. This graph shows how inequality actually worsened after the fall of the Soviet Union. This is where Vladimir Putin enters politics. He leaves the KGB in 1991 and becomes the deputy mayor of St. Petersburg. Putin uses his position to give special treatment to friends and allies in the private sector. He helps them structure monopolies and regulates their competitors, quickly becoming a favorite among the oligarchs. Before long, he's assembled a support network of oligarchs, crime bosses, and security officials, mostly fellow former KGB officers like he was. With their help, he rapidly ascends to the upper echelons of the new Russian state. In 1999, President Boris Yeltsin appoints Putin, still relatively unknown in national politics, to be the prime minister. A fierce nationalist, Putin feared Yeltsin was letting the U.S. dominate Russia and that NATO, the alliance that worked for decades to contain Soviet influence, would expand into the new liberated countries and surround Russia. Putin's goal then became to build a strong Russian state, one that would be both stable at home and capable of exercising more influence over Makes its sense. neighbors. And he quickly got his chance. During the post-Soviet chaos, there was escalating violence in Chechnya, a region that had informally seceded from Russia in the mid-90s. Chechen warlords and terrorists were pushing into Russian territory and attacking the border. In August 1999, a series of deadly bombings killed more than 300 people in several Russian cities, including Moscow. Putin, the new prime minister, immediately blames Chechen separatists for the attacks. He regularly appears on Russian television, claiming he will avenge Russia. The population quickly rallies around him, Putin's approval ratings jumped from 2% before the bombings to 45% after the bombings. Journalists later uncovered evidence that suggests Russian security services could have been complicit in the Moscow bombings, perhaps knowing they would spark support for a strong man like Putin. But a closed state investigation quickly quashed any dissenting theories. So Russia launches a popular and devastating war in Chechnya. The capital city of Grozny was leveled by Russian bombing, and some estimate close to 80,000 people died. And in less than a year, Russia successfully brings Chechnya back under its control. In December 1999, Yeltsin suddenly resigns, 
making Putin the interim president. In May, during the bloody campaign in Chechnya. Oh, so there Putin, was no elections. He just resigned. And since Putin was the prime minister, he just tries to be the president. I thought there was a vote and that he won by election. I didn't know that he didn't win by election. Wins the presidential oh. election. He begins okay. to shape the Russian state to his so vision. one year later. Patronage and corruption remain some of his key tools, but he quickly suppresses the oligarchs under his rule. Those that support Putin are rewarded. Those that don't are eliminated. Well, once Russia's richest man, imprisoned Kremlin critic and former oil magnate Mikhail Khodorkovsky was sentenced to 14 years in jail, this on a new conviction of embezzling oil. This is effectively a vendetta uh, from uh, Vladimir Putin uh, for uh, Khodorkovsky getting involved in opposition politics. With the oligarchy tamed, Putin was now free to move his vision outside of Russia's borders. At the time, relations with the U.S. were fairly good. Putin even vacationed at George W. Bush's oh. summer home. I looked the man in the eye. I found it to be very straightforward and trustworthy. But things were about to change. In August 2008, Russia invades Georgia, a former Soviet republic. It's a display of aggression and strength on behalf of pro-Russian separatists there. Russia quickly annexes two small parts of Georgia, drawing condemnation from all over the world. Interestingly, though, Putin was not president during the invasion. See, the Russian constitution says a president can only serve two consecutive terms but sets no limit on the total number of terms one oh. can serve. So Putin took the prime minister role again when his hand-picked successor, Dmitry Medvedev, served as president. When Obama's elected U.S. president in 2008, he attempts to reset relations with Russia, and they make some progress, most notably to limit both countries' nuclear arsenals. But Putin remains paranoid about U.S. intentions and remains opposed to these new relations. He's particularly bothered by U.S. interventions in the Middle East, especially in Libya yeah. in 2011. He publicly criticizes Medvedev for not vetoing the action in the UN yep. Security Council. Putin announces his candidacy for president and wins the 2012 election by a preposterous margin. Injustice so between 2008 Dmitry. and 2012, another guy was president, but they said he handpicked him. How does that work? Because I think they had to go to the elections and then the guy had to win by vote. So how would Putin handpick him to be his successor? This outrage can't continue. I'm here to say no to Putin. Putin starts his third term once again amid chaos. He doubles down on his authoritarian governance style at home and his militaristic strategy abroad. But in both cases, he showcases a mastery of information. Since he first took office in 2000, Putin has kept a tight leash on Russian television. Essentially, all news outlets are state-owned propaganda machines. His regime decides which stories air and how, always depicting him as the strong Russian leader. In 2012, he cracked down on human rights and civil liberties, making clear there was no room for dissent in his Russia. Using state television, for example, he administered a blistering campaign against a feminist and gay rights music group, Pussy Riot. The latest and the loudest uh, uh, such performance was the so-called punk prayer at the Christ the Savior Cathedral. No, where why they would you were... go? No matter what your beliefs are, why would you go to a church? To do something like this especially in russia which is a i think an orthodox christian country like i know you gotta do your activism and all of that but keep it out of the places of worship uh, especially in 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 an orthodox country or yelling things which were rather profane to be yelled in church. Of course, three yeah. members of uh, punk group Pussy Riot were convicted and uh, sentenced to two years in prison. Putin has also bolstered his aggressive foreign strategy. He's used traditional military methods like sending weapons and fighter planes to help dictator Bashar al-Assad fight a bloody civil war in Syria. But Putin's regime has also developed and fostered the most effective cyber army in the world, and he's used it to wreak havoc in the West. These hackers have stolen classified U.S. information, hacked politicians' email accounts, even shut down Georgia's internet while Russian troops invaded. And of course, they tried to sabotage Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign in 2016. Russian hackers have also launched propaganda campaigns in support of right-wing candidates in Europe. With this, Putin hopes to exploit and deepen the political divide in Western democracies. In 2014, the Putin vision culminated in the targeting of Ukraine, another former Soviet country. Ukraine's Wait. president was opening up to the... So if uh, Putin is supporting uh, far-right uh, regimes, is he a white supremacist? Because I've never something, I've never heard something about Putin being a white supremacist. The bad thing that I hear about him is that he's a communist and Russia is a communist country, but I've never heard about him being 
a white supremacist. This is the first time that I see him support the regimes of far right movement. To the West and Putin feared he would join NATO. So Russian hackers launched a propaganda campaign against him, stoking protests in the pro-Russia eastern part of the country. He then sent in disguised Russian troops and before long violence erupts. In goes the Russian military and in early 2014, Putin annexes Crimea. Mm -hmm. He continues to support the fighting in Ukraine and as of 2017, over 9,000 people have died. The world erupts in protests, but Putin doesn't give in. See, his aggressive foreign policy successfully weakens his neighbors while also rallying Russians around him. But he has done all of this at the expense of his own people. His invasions have prompted harsh sanctions from the West, barring Russian businesses from trading in Western markets. Russian currency has plummeted in value and the energy industry that Russia relies on is collapsing. It's hard to imagine Russia can continue under these circumstances. But the election of Donald Trump brings new hope for the Putin vision. Trump's rhetoric has been notably soft on Russia. He could lift sanctions and weaken NATO, potentially freeing up space for Putin's Russia to become a dominant power once again. So Trump doesn't like NATO and he wants support. He wanted to support Vladimir Putin to weaken NATO. But I think that went somewhere else because since Biden won, something else. But yeah, that was interesting. I didn't know some a lot of facts about Putin. And I don't know how is Russia a democratic country. Uh, maybe it's a different kind of democracy. Because I think they said you can get reelected for as many times as you want, as long as you don't succeed. The only time you're allowed uh, to do to be reelected uh, consecutively is twice. But then if you think about it, Putin was reelected in 2012. And if a mandate is four years, then 2018 should have been, no, no, eight years, 2020 should have been that. But then to this day, he is president. So I don't know how uh, politics works in Russia. Please let me know in the comments how do you guys deal with reelecting president and things like that. Because Putin has been in power since 1999, except the four years that this this other guy that they said he handpicked was president. But yeah, that was interesting. I've learned some things.